what is your feeling like the moment you know that you are attending an interview today? So what is your feeling now? Did you prepare for everything? Not completely. So can you introduce yourself? As you know, myself Santosh and I have about 9 years of experience in the various uh, IT administrator roles. I initially worked for uh, Destro Support Engineer, then I worked for uh, Windows System and Server Administration. I worked on uh, Vulnerable to Management Engineer and uh, lastly I worked on Cyber Arc uh, Engineer. Currently I have about one year of career here, so I want to compensate that career gap by learning a new thing. So I started learning Azure DevOps, Multi-Cloud DevOps with uh, Azure and uh, AWS. I see that you have experience, like you mentioned many years of experience. So I see that you are into DevOps engineering. You can explain earlier one. Okay. In my last organization, I work for a cyber engineer. There, my day-to-day -day activities are to log in on the US time zone. And I need to get a report from my leadership desk and uh, the pending ticket. And I need to follow on the users on their availability zone. I used to get a request on a cyber security related alerts, newly created policies project. And in, in warning of newly created part of this, uh, on a weekly basis, I used to get a report auditing report. Uh, with that auditing uh, report, I used to get a list of missions. With that missions, I will be checking with the responsibility to, uh, team to get missions to be migration oh, for the okay. migration. Okay, fine. So you said you, you worked on admin Windows administration as well, right? Yeah. So to how do you know clustering part in Windows? How you are going to cl cluster your Windows, multiple servers? <laughs> how many types of clustering you can do in Windows? I was able to L3 with the Windows system administration to get calls on uh, 24 by 7. I need to assist the user over the calls or the message or the email or the chat. So what kind of issues you used to get regularly? Most of the issues are related to the VPN connection related issues and uh, general login related issues, uh, password change issues. Okay, so let's leave over Windows administration. Now coming to Azure. Now I'll start from the basic level. So just explain me how many types of endpoints we have in Azure and why it is required but for what purpose we will be using those endpoints. Talk about why in which scenario we can use the service endpoints. I mean endpoints. It's scenarios we can use the endpoints. Give a detailed an explanation with an example. In general, we have two types of endpoints. Private endpoint and private endpoint. Private endpoint and uh, service endpoint. Mm. Service endpoint is for past related uh, services. We use a service endpoint. By using service endpoint, we can connect to that uh, particular service a particular past service. So why endpoints are required? Okay, leave out private and private service. So why endpoints are required? Endpoint is like an end user service. Uh, like mm. a user trying to connect or access any uh, system or a service the endpoint uh, means the user okay, now you tell me i want a difference between storage service endpoint and sql service endpoint in both the cases service endpoints is same mm -hmm. but we are using a different passive okay then coming to load balancers right so in the load balancers which type of load balancer supports cdn friend or in which load balancers waf supports i think it's a uh, traffic management mm, good answer what kind of global load balancers you have in azure Except application load balancer, all the other three are global load balancer. Application? Except application gateway. Gateway. Okay. So application gateway, all are, all are global load balancers. Right. So now traffic manager, how traffic manager works? Traffic manager has uh, six rules mm -hmm. uh, in which we set level uh, so that the traffic six will... Six rules? Six methods. Okay. Uh, what methods? Six routing methods. Mm -hmm. um, by using those six routing methods, uh, the traffic will be distributed. Okay. Uh, for example, we have if we select a routing method as priority, as the priority level is low, the hit level will be high. For example, in a scenario, we have two reasons and one reason in is US or uh, US. One reason is having a priority 100 and another reason having a priority of 1000. The traffic uh, hits the traffic load balancer. The traffic load balancer will route that traffic to the lowest priority. The connection will go to the priority is to yes, as the priority is low. Okay. So then what is the purpose of priority 1001? Anything happens to the highest priority uh, like uh, any failover or any issues something like uh, if the service is down the priority 101 is the priority of the missions are down. It will route the traffic to the priority 1000 whether it's low or high um, because uh, the priority highest priority was down. So the traffic will be automatically routed to the another uh, uh, available load well, available mission. So in this kind of scenario what is exactly what I'm achieving it by using priority method, right? What kind of thing I'm achieving? It? If I'm using two two different servers, two different priorities, what kind of thing I'm achieving? It? A latency. We could able to perform failover method. Okay, failover. That is important, right? Priority is what priority I'm doing. Failover method. If something goes goes wrong, so I'm using my standby thing. Yeah, this applies to all the systems. This applies to all the systems. How? 
as you mentioned uh, this is a failure weightage right? doesn't perform failure right uh-huh. what is the purpose of geographical load routing methods in geographical if you are trying to access uh, an indian server uh, for example the user is from india resource and we have a data center in india location and us location user try to reach a resource and it the indian indian uh, database server as database well. where database came into which chart for an example we have a two data centers one is in us and one is in india mm-hmm. uh, by using geographical if we set a position like uh, we have geographical location and we have a us location if the end user trying to access server from india location the access will route indian uh, database as we said uh, geographical location is uh, one of the data centers of india okay thanks